and we are officially ready to start. I believe in um, we have a an appointed time and we are here. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has joined. And I want to welcome you to the power to finish. And just to poll the room a little bit, tell me, and looking at some of the names that are already posting in the chat, I think we've got some superstars in the room. Because you're superstars, I know you all have some amazing audacious goals set for 2021. Right? Anyone? Yes? Absolutely, Allison. Absolutely. One thing is true. Many of us set goals every year or throughout the year, but how frequently do we achieve those goals at the 100% rate? Anyone? Anybody knocking it out of the park? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think some of us, right, we, we tend to fluctuate depending on the circumstances and the criteria of the goal and how important it is to us. It may vacillate from one year to the next. Well, today I want to share a proven system that I've used in various parts of my life. And I'll share a little bit more of that as we continue our discussion today, how we can drastically increase our effectiveness and our consistency in completing the goals that we set. Who's excited about that? I am. Me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I want to encourage you all to interact. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add them to the chat screen and Allison will help me make sure I am seeing everything that I should see. Today, we're going to discuss the fundamentals of resilience and endurance and build our power to finish. Many of us have heard this common phrase, right? How do you eat an elephant? And Desmond Tutu is known for saying there's only one way to eat an elephant, and that's one bite at a time. We've heard it a million times. If we had five pennies for every time we've heard that phrase, one bite at a time, all of us would be millionaires. The question is, after the 257th bite, then what? You can't bite an elephant or eat an elephant one bite at a time and expect that to be done in about three or four bites. I can imagine at around 257, you should have at least a significant amount of that elephant consumed, right? Guess what? After even the 257th bite, there is still more elephant. And that's what many of us feel in our course of trying to accomplish our goals, especially these really big, audacious goals, Things like, like I've done, publishing, writing and publishing books, pursuing graduate degrees, giving your first speech at Toastmasters. Some of those things really feel like large, audacious goals. In the midst of that process, though, at times you feel absolutely overwhelmed and depleted and you begin to question. You ask yourself why? And not even the good why, like the Simon Sinek, Sinek why that talks about your motivation and what keeps you all amped up and excited, but the why that says, why in the world did I even try this? Or why did I even think this was possible for me? Well, today I want to encourage you to know that you absolutely have the power to finish. Today we have a few objectives. We're going to increase our awareness of our common areas of resistance. For, for some of us in our room today, resistance will be a new phrase, but I assure you, you have already encountered resistance. We're gonna also develop a plan to strengthen our personal resilience and ignite our own personal commitments to building resilience and heighten endurance. We're gonna do that by sharing a few of my own personal stories and gathering ideas that are shared by thought leaders and experts in the area of finishing. 
For those of you who love books and collecting items for your library, I have a few book references and these are some of the tools that I've used to pull together this material that I'll be sharing. And the first book is a book for um, women, but the concept of finishing is applicable to everyone. But the book title is Female Code, a Women's Book for Empowerment and Confidence. I've written a chapter in this in, on, anthology on the power to finish, which is the basis of our talk today. You can find that in most sellers as well as colinance.com. Then there's also a book called The War of Art, Breaking Through the Blocks and Win Your Inner Creative Battles by Stephen Pressfield. I happen to have the digital copy of that book, so I can't hold that one up. But I do have this awesome book called Finish, Give Yourself the Gift of Done by John Acoff. All great resources to add to your library as you're building your finishing skills. Let's talk first about resistance. Now, there's a lot of descriptive words shown on your screen, and I know this breaks every Toastmasters rule for PowerPoint. Trust me, I would never dare to read these to you. I want to point out a few attributes, though, of resistance and tell you how you may have already encountered resistance. Resistance typically shows up anytime you are doing work that includes growth, personal growth, financial growth, intellectual growth, or even humanitarian and spiritual growth. Resistance is that invisible force that you feel and sense, but sometimes you just can't put your finger on it. The great thing to know about resistance is it's absolutely universal. So don't take it personally. It's not attacking just you. It is something that almost everyone who is working towards building and growing themselves experiences. The most powerful thing to know about resistance is resistance is fueled by fear. It has no strength or even will of its own. It understands that you think it might show up, so of course it shows up. Let's describe a little bit more about resistance. Resistance includes things like procrastination. Any procrastinators in the room to say, oh, tomorrow's the perfect day to start this new system. <laughs> I will begin my new workout plan on Monday. And we all know today is Friday. There's no better day than today. If, pro if procrastination is your common go-to, you have experienced resistance. What about doubt? Questions like, Will they think I have anything valid to say? Will they believe in me? Am I worthy of even having this experience go well for me? Being highly critical of yourself or others. Someone who's always noticing that little trite thing that's not exactly perfect, who is always using that as an excuse to say, no, no, not yet, because it's not quite ready. Or I'd like to review it one more time before I hit the final send or enter. That is absolutely resistance. What about this new phrase that I'm hearing a lot more called the imposter syndrome? The fear or the thought that says one day everyone's going to know that I'm a fraud and I've been faking it the whole time. Yes, that is resistance. And let's not even begin about the negative self-talk. Words like, I can't, I don't think so, it won't work. All of that self-talk, whether it is physically vocalized or just ruminating in our thought systems, all of that represents resistance and provides opportunities for distractions, isolation, and fear. Stephen Pressfield assures us, though, that most of us have have two lives, the life that we live and the unlived life within us. Between the two stands resistance. Our goal always is to join that distance and eradicate the existence of resistance. That's a big old tongue teaser. Eradicate that existence 
so that we can fully live in the completeness of who we are. Everything that we want to accomplish in life is absolutely possible for us. And we want to work through a specific strategy to make that happen consistently. Now, I want you to take a note. Every now and then you'll see these little take note reminders that will ask you to make a note for yourself. So hopefully you've got a writing device close by or a digital way to capture your thoughts. In this moment though, we've described resistance. Take a note and describe how resistance has impacted your path to success. And if you have any thoughts that you would like to share in the chat room, please feel free to make note. For me, when I am noticing that I am delaying or procrastinating more, I recognize that resistance is present. And a great indicator about resistance, the more important and the more purpose-driven the idea or the goal is, resistance typically shows up in a more resounding way. So look for that indicator. It's like a little flag that says, oh, this is a really big deal because resistance wants to show up and hang out. All right, hopefully you've had a moment to gather a thought or two. Let's continue because resistance has a, an enemy, like what is the, for Superman, his weakness was kryptonite. Well, the kryptonite for resistance is resilience. So let's talk about a plan for building resilience. And I'm a person who's very regimented and planned. I love systems. I love order and organization. And the best way to overcome resistance is to build resilience. I have what I call the 5R process. There are five steps and five concepts that need to always be a part of your plan as you're preparing to accomplish a new goal. Let's begin with the first R, which is risk assessment. Anytime you are beginning a new project, to make sure you have the greatest level of success and efficiency and accomplishment you always want to enter it with a well, uh, a high level of awareness of the risk that are involved. Even before you begin, you want to gather information and ask yourself certain questions. Questions like, how much time will this goal require of me? Will it take away from other relationships or other commitments in order for me to accomplish this? How much money will it cost? Will it require me to change other parts of my life that really are important? And then you can understand, understanding those risks, you'll know what the investment will require. As you're doing your risk assessment, I recommend that you also do a resistance assessment. In my early example, I noted that procrastination is a way that resistance shows up for me consistently. Typically, understanding in your risk assessment process, you should understand what resistance you expect to appear. The whole key of this risk assessment and resistance assessment stage is to prepare yourself in advance. When these items or situations show up, you won't be stunned or shocked or thrown off your guard. You already have a positive answer and a positive solution in place when that resistance or that risk appears. For example, in the publication and writing of my first book, it literally took me five years and a move across the country to go from the outline phase to my completed publication. And finally, in 2016, I was able to publish. The problem though, with that whole process, 
of the five-year journey where it was only an outline was solely procrastination. I'd write and then I'd stop because I felt like I didn't have enough information. Our, my first book was on overcoming rejection. And I lived through all of the examples. So how is it possible for me not to know enough to tell my own story? Well, resistance was present and it caused a five-year delay in moving through the outline phase to the completed work. It's so important to know that when your resistance and when these risk factors show up, that you know how to address them quickly and systematically. Now, when I'm working towards accomplishing a new goal and procrastination tries to creep in, the truth of the matter is resistance never goes away. We just become more wise in understanding how to address it. When procrastination creeps in, I instantly go back to my calendar and remind myself of the items that I have committed to myself that I need to complete each day and along each journey towards accomplishing that goal. So do the assessments first so that you have an answer and a response ready for the risk and resistance that show up. The R2, the next phase is relationships. Now we are a part of a wonderful organization that really is geared around and centered around wonderful relationships. Oftentimes, I've been a Toastmaster now for 10 years. Oftentimes when I'd arrive at a meeting, I'd say, wow, this is like the most supportive atmosphere and environment I've ever been in. A great place to learn and grow. Well, Toastmasters has exhibited the importance of relationships. And relationships are important to you in your journey of accomplishing and completing goals. It's important that you know that there are people who are ready and willing to encourage you and support you. You do not have to be an island floating along all by yourself, figuring it out all on your own. Gather a community. There are so many, many organizations and online communications and means for us to connect with people with similar goals or people who have skills that are different than the ones you currently have and build a community, not only for the sake of support, but the sake of expanding your thoughts and your ideas. I often say, I am not the person who has every idea about everything. If I can find other people who think and see and view situations from various points of view, it will help broaden and expand the scope of my ideas. It's important that we open ourselves and stretch further beyond all of our comfort zones and be willing to allow people to support us and be a part of our team. You can find reliable people to not only gather insight and information, but to hold you accountable in the midst of your process. You can share not only ideas, but there may be opportunities where someone can take a portion of your task or action items to help you progress through your, your process of completing your goal much more quickly and you get the power of synergy. When you're gathering all of those minds, it's really a mastermind opportunity to gather thoughts and to gather ideas. You get the synergistic power of creating something bigger and more vast than you could have done all on your own. So gather some, some relationships, gather groups and community and join with people so that they can share in your evolution and growth process. Now, here's another thinking moment. We have an opportunity to take a few notes. Write down the key risk that you wanna prepare yourself to avoid or overcome. These risks that you will have this level of awareness so in advance you can prepare a solution if that risk or even resistance 
decides to display itself. And your other note will be, make a list of people that you would like to be a part of your success circle. That's what I call the agents that I think are assigned to assist me as I am going from one level to the next or from one goal to the next. Make a list of people. You may not have their actual names, but you may know their roles. There may be a manager or a CEO or someone who is a local entrepreneur that has certain skill sets that you'd like to glean. Write that name or that role on your list. Anyone have any thoughts or any questions that you'd like to add to the chat as we are continuing to move through this portion? Nope, no questions so far. Thank you, Allison. All right, let's continue. The third R is responsibility. And here's one that's gonna take a really deep breath. The truth is everything that you desire to accomplish and the life that you would love to des design or have be existence for you is 100% your responsibility. You have the ability to shape through your thoughts, your decisions, your action items, and your goals. You can reshape or design the life you'd like to live. Now, I'll share a personal story here that September 2019, a company that I'd worked for nearly 15 years decided that they wanted to change their organizational structure. And my role, as well as about 200 other people, we all um, lost our roles. That was my opportunity to make several decisions. I could have decided to certainly be sad and gloomy I could have decided to jump right back into the corporate world market, or I could have decided to use this as an opportunity to really take a leap and fully commit to working full time in my own company. Well, the fact is I made the decision to fully invest in building and growing my own company and now I work for my own coaching and consulting company rather than trying to go back into the workplace. It meant a lot for me to have autonomy and to fill my days with doing things that I love, like being here with you. You too have that same level of responsibility and that same level to choose. It's actually a position of freedom, but this responsibility also comes with the need for accountability. We really should not be the only person that knows that we're working towards certain goals. And I, yes, I know, if you're inventing the next billion dollar idea, no, you shouldn't tell everyone. But there should be someone that knows that you're working to accomplish something really fantastic and allow them to hold you accountable whether that's a coach or a friend or a spouse or a fellow Toastmaster, let someone know that you're working towards building yourself, growing yourself and accomplishing something great and give them permission to check in with you from time to time. There is nothing more powerful than knowing that someone has expectation for you to do something great. And that they're willing to check with you and make sure you're successing your success, your success process is moving in a concerted effort. Allow them to check in with you and to allow them to give you honest feedback. And if you're not meeting your target timelines, let them hold you accountable to that. They're really doing you a great favor. Our fourth R is relentless commitment. We talked a little bit about the why, and we've all heard Simon Sinek talk about that why that's that great big motivator. But I'd like to blend that why with a how, because a lot of us are excited about doing things and we have that warm, fuzzy feeling that says, oh my goodness, I can do 
this phenomenal new goal. But unless we have a systematic approach to the how, oftentimes our commitment starts to wane as the process becomes a little more difficult. I believe creating systems and processes help remove a lot of that disdain through the parts of goal setting and goal seeking that become difficult. Systems and processes create efficiencies, they help us remain consistent when the world and life starts to explode all around us, we can go right in and plug into a system. We understand that a lot of time there are events that will happen that will sometimes create distractions. It's important to have your system already in place. And if you have the ability to automate the system, well, that puts you heads and tails above many people. It's so important to write down your goals, write specific timelines and action items, create process guidelines, as well as use tools for automation because that helps build your confidence. Whenever we feel overwhelmed, it's simply because we feel like we have more to do than we know how to do. This systematic approach answers the question of what will be done, when, and how. You can relate to that and rely on that system whenever you're feeling confused or don't really know what the next steps. Allow that to be the fuel for your relentless commitment. Here's another opportunity for you to take a note. I want you to schedule a meeting with yourself to design and describe your ideal life. On this description, write out what your average day looks like. Describe how you feel when you wake up each morning. List who you'll spend your time with and understand what your ideal life will include. Will it include, include more opportunities for you to give to the community and more humanitarian efforts? Will it include more opportunities for you to speak with groups and encourage and inspire people? Will it include you moving into new levels of leadership? Will it include you achieving a new educational goal? Whatever you want to see your life include, write it down and describe it. The next note is, ask yourself, how will you display your commitment to make this big audacious goal possible? It's important that you not only say you're committed, but that your action really does support what your words are saying. The fifth R is what I call rapid response. This is really critical because it requires us now to take a more analytical and objective view of our progression towards our goal. This allows us to be mindful of what's really working and what's not working as well as we hoped. I always say to business owners and people who are working to accomplish goals, you must know your numbers. Even if it is you're in the job seeking market and you want to know how effective this process is for you, then you should know how many resumes and applications you're submitting each week. And based on that number, how many responses are you receiving? Are you receiving notes and requests for pre-screening interviews or test completions? Are you receiving invitations for interviews? Knowing those numbers will help you determine if you're sending out 20 applications and resumes a week, you'll know if that's giving you the results you want. When you are not receiving the results you expect, then you make a rapid response. And that's a phrase that many of us here call the pivot. It's important to be willing to pivot quickly so that you don't misuse your time and miss 
critical opportunity that may be waiting for you to position yourself differently. The pivot really doesn't change the goal, nor does it change the end point. It's just being flexible to shift the means and the method that you're using to get to the desired location. The great win in R5 and the rapid response is you are building character. The ability to objectively analyze your performance and the results you receive require a lot of bold and courageous spirit. This is the character that will carry you through to the goal completion. And I say, it's the building of the character that's even more profitable for you than the goal completion itself. Now let's quickly review, right? We did the R5, right? Risk assessment, relationships, excuse me, um, relentless commitment, responsibility, and rapid response. Now, there are three main benefits of this approach. The first is, of course, it is a preemptive and proactive approach. And I say it takes us from the heart of goal setting to the head of goal setting. Because many times our emotions are so wrapped up and even at times our ego are so involved that it prohibits our ability to really see our approach from a fully object objective perspective. But being preemptive and proactive allows us to prepare ourselves so that our emotions aren't entangled. The next is that it creates collaboration and support. It builds relationship. It opens us up to receive so much more insight and input from various sources that by no means will we ever fall short. Lastly, it gives us a high vantage point to create great gains. I often say sometimes when we're too far in the weeds, we can't really see the full field. So strategic planning only takes place when we elevate our viewpoint, when we elevate our, our relationship to the goal, we now see it from a strategic point of view and can fully see beyond Oh, I just want to complete my master's, but now I want to complete my master's so that I can open a consulting business or become a high level manager or be available for any other new opportunity. These three benefits really do provide an opportunity and creates the system to be effective in completing every goal we set. Here's another opportunity to take a note. There's a question, what changes would you make to what you have already experienced? In your previous episodes of completing or setting goals and maybe falling slightly short, take a moment and think about the changes you'd make in your experience for this year. Next question is ask yourself, which benefits are you most looking forward to appreciating or experiencing? Is it the ability now to look at your goal from the strategic point of view, as opposed to just checking off another box? Or maybe it's the opportunity to collaborate more and gain support from some new success circle members. We're almost ready to wrap up. So I want you to prepare to finish and feel that exhilaration of crossing the finish line. Wow, she looks so excited. <laughs> and the key here is allow yourself to celebrate. Many of us who are super type A's and super goal oriented, forget the moment of celebration. And as soon as one thing is done, we are quick and ready to start the next. Allow yourself a moment to celebrate. And I say, even celebrate the small wins along the way. Maybe if you are pursuing an educational goal after you complete each course, I don't know, have a special uh, coffee at Starbucks or sit outside on the back porch and ruminate for a moment as opposed to being glued into your computer and your monitor. Find a way that really rebuilds you throughout the process because that will give you the sustaining strength 
to completely enjoy your progress and your success. Gather up all of the confidence that you gained in the process of completing this past goal and save that in a treasure chest so that you can use it for your next project. And yes, looking at the people in the room, there is always a next project. Assess the lessons that you've learned, find the things that didn't work as well as you hoped, and gain efficiencies as you make those pivots and minor modifications. Now, here's the big one. Resist the temptation to expect perfection ever. I should really put a period. Resist the temptation to expect perfection. Perfection will cause us anxiety and delay and stress for no reason at all. In fact, my newest saying is done is better than perfect. At least you're finished. And most times you'll have opportunities to make corrections or adjustments even after you've made the first release. Enjoy the process. Here's the last step for us. We have to commit. We have to eliminate the fear of the finish line. There are people who literally avoid getting to the finishing point because A, they don't know what to do next. And then secondly, they fear not being as successful in the next venture. Remember, perfection is not the goal and always be proactive in doing your risk and resistance assessments. You're free to be everything you desire. If there's one takeaway, know that you have the freedom and the possibilities to accomplish everything that your heart can desire and imagine for yourself. This is a commitment to yourself. Yes, the world may benefit from it, but you are doing and giving yourself the greatest gift possible. Write a quick statement of commitment to yourself. And this one is another opportunity for you to spend some time and make an appointment with yourself that you wanna write a statement of commitment that includes a specific goal, a target date, your key action steps, not every detail, but the high level ones that will be necessary for you to reach your goal. And then sign and date it. You are entering into an agreement and a contract with yourself. I'm excited for you. And I look forward to seeing you all at the finish line. And I just personally believe every presentation should have a squirrel somewhere in it. So I would love to see how excited you all are at the finish line. This is a great time for you to ask any questions you have or share any of your thoughts. My last slide will show you how you can reach out to me, but I will also be in the expo room if you want to chat with me afterwards. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Holland. This was great. I really do feel that finishing is like a project on its own. Like, you know, we all set goals and then we're going, working towards them. But to actually finish it, that's a whole nother program. So I really think this is a great topic. I think you delivered it great. So thank you for your information that you provided and all your wisdom. Well, thank you, Allison. I appreciate you and your interaction with me. But to everyone in the room, I look forward to celebrating with you as you finish every goal that you've set, especially for this year. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or, or comments or anything that you'd like to share with Holland? I think we are good. All right. Well, there are many ways that you can reach out to me if there are any questions. I'm willing to answer them as needed. Thank you again, Allison. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Holland. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Robin.